Hello everyone. Welcome to the Joy of Assembly. If it's your first time here, I want to thank you for inviting us into your home. I'm not leaving. It's my home now. On today's episode of the Joy of Assembly, we'll be assembling this beautiful little 5 Series BMS that we've been working on here on the channel. So I want to invite you to come along with us as we assemble this circuit board. Grab your stencil squeegee and grab your tweezers and let's get started with today's video. Now I'll go ahead and have them run all the components that you'll need across the screen to assemble along with us today and let's get started with today's build. Now I already have my stencil station set up. Of course you don't need a stencil station. Again it's your world. It's where you want to build your PCB. You can do whatever you want. The world is your canvas. But me, I like to use a stencil station. So I have a frame stencil here set up and then there's my PCB set up in these neat little holders that we 3D printed here at PTI. And everything's just ready to go. The PCB's tucked nice and cozy underneath this paint stencil. Now the solder paste that I like to use for all my DIY projects and prototypes is leaded solder paste. This Chip Quick TS391AX50. Uh, because I like happiness and joy in my life, and that is not brought on by using one lead-free solder paste in anything. So this is what we're going to be using on today's build. So I've zoomed in here to the paste stencil so we can see things a little bit better. We can see the cozy little PCB tucked underneath its stainless steel blanket here. But you can see there are two different pockets here for the same PCB. This is a double-sided board. One side has all the control circuitry and the other side has the power circuitry on it. So uh, we're going to reflow this side first, the control circuitry side first, and because I believe it's the lightest side and I'm afraid these FETs are going to fall off if we were to flip it over. So let's take and apply our solder paste to this first part and start putting together our happy little PCB. Now I've got my butter knife here in the little um, tin of solder paste and I'm just going to scrape out what's left and I'm just going to take and put it right here. Just put it right there on the top with my butter knife. And then I'm going to take my squeegee and I'm just going to lightly drag it. Just lightly drag it over the orifices. Now this solder paste is a little bit old because I forgot to order some, but it's okay. This is just for prototyping. Your solder paste may not look stringy like this, but it's okay. This is just for prototyping. Now, you want to make sure you get a good layer and cover everything. This is not going well, but it's okay. It's our world. We can do whatever we want. So let's just make sure we get decent coverage. Scrape everything away. And there we go. Looks like everything is covered. So let's lift our stencil up and take a look at our results. So even though we had a little bit of an accident with the solder paste, it turned into a happy little accident because all the lands have their proper amount of solder paste, everything looks good, and leaded solder will do that. It will hold up uh, a lot better to age leaded solder wheel than lead-free solder wheel. That's why I like to use it for my prototypes. So let's start putting our components here on this happy little PCB. So here's the method I like to use when I'm putting together a prototype to try to keep everything organized and try to keep everything neat and clean. Of course, it's your world. You can put prototypes together however you would like. This is just the way I like to do it. I take my bill of material and I like to organize my components in the order that I like to assemble the PCB. So first, I always like to start with capacitors, and so I'll put them first, and then I like to do my resistors. So I'll put them next. I like to do the small stuff first, and then I'll go in the order that everything else falls in the uh, the bill material. So in this one, your diodes are first, so I'll do those third, uh, then a fuse, and I'll skip that for right now because it's on the top side of the PCB, not the bottom that we're assembling right now. Um, and then I'll do my FETs normally. However, that's on the top side of the BMS as well, so we will be skipping those. And then my main control chipset, uh, we'll be putting that on there, and then my two connectors and we'll be putting those on the bottom side so that's just something I like to do and then I'll keep everything organized here in these bins and then I have this empty one here so when I get done with one component I'll put it in this bin and then eventually this will be transferred over here so let's get started putting this BMS together 
So the first bell material items we are going to look at here are, of course, the capacitor, starting with the 1 microfarad 0805 capacitor and then going on down. So line number three will actually be skipped because all of those are on the top side of the PCB. So we'll be looking at line items two and four to populate here on the bottom side of the PCB. So let's get started placing those. There we go, there's all of our capacitors here placed on the bottom of this PCB, tucked nice and cozy down in their little cozy solder paste. Now I'm going to go to the resistors and then to the diodes and then to the uh, main chip and the connectors. And so I'll just time lapse that because if it bores me, I'm sure it bores you as well. And this is supposed to be a happy video, something for you to relax to. So let me time lapse me putting the rest of these components on and then we'll get to putting this thing through the reflow oven. While Alex Ross is struggling to build a PCB on an incline in front of the camera, I would like to thank today's sponsor who is Pro Technologies here in beautiful Piedmont, North Carolina. Of course, they're letting me use their lab and their equipment to film all of my videos. And if you follow me, uh, you'll know that I'm a BMS designer and a design for Pro Technologies. We are a custom battery pack manufacturer, so our engineering team does all the mechanical and electrical design of the pack, and then we have a production facility here that will build your pack, test it, and shipping it out to you. So contact sales at protechnologies.com if you are in need of custom battery packs for your projects or just to let them know how much you love Alex Ross. And that's all the components placed here on the bottom. I did have a little bit of struggle since this is on an incline. This is holding my tweezers straight. That's the angle that this uh, this BMS is at. So trying to do that and around the camera was a little difficult, but I think things went, went okay. I do think I smeared the paste up underneath this IC and I'll have to touch that up with a soldering iron. But besides that, I think everything went right. Uh, this footprint is empty because unfortunately when I was ordering parts, I ordered this header and forgot to order this header, but that's okay. That's just a happy little accident. is isn't nothing a DigiQ order can't solve. So let's take this thing over to the reflow oven and reflow the first side of this PCB. So this is my reflow oven. It's a T926A and uh, it's the one that I like to use for everything. It is running modified firmware um, and I'll link that video to where I modified this um, up in the cards of the top of the video. But I like to place my PCB here somewhere near the middle and I like to uh, support it here but I like to leave the middle as open as possible underneath the solder joints to make sure that the heat can dissipate very well. So the first thing that I'll do is put it in manual mode and then I will take my temperature down from where I was baking some components and I will let this preheat for about a minute and a half is what I'll do. About, I don't know, 90 seconds. I'll let it preheat to about 30 degrees because in a cheap oven like this, normally you want to bring a uh, PCB up to room temperature, but I found like in a cheap oven like this, it just needs a little bit more help. So let's let this preheat and then we'll get to the reflow. And there we go. It is finished uh, preheating. So let's uh, select our profile here. That'll be the profile that we're going to use. And then let's start the process. And just like that, this wonderful little oven has reflowed this PCB. It is currently in its cool down cycle, so we won't take it out yet. But I do love this wonderful little oven. Again, a link to the, uh, the video where I modified this little oven will be up in the cards. But let's take this PCB over to the stencil station. We still need to uh, paste the top of it and then put those components on it. But this oven is wonderful for, for reflowing PCBs and uh, also making Totino's pizzas uh, if you do get hungry while making boards. So just like before, I have the paste stencil set up with the PCB nicely tucked cozy under its stainless steel shell. Now you'll notice these uh, cutouts here for the Alpha and Omega 6144s are showing a little bit of green and I'm not quite sure why. 
The stencil is lined up correct to the PCB, square as it should be. However, there is a little bit of green showing through. I'm not sure if these cutouts are exactly correct uh, for this footprint, but for this type of footprint, it'll be just fine. Again, this is just the prototyping world. Everything is fine. We can fix anything. So there are no gaps. You can push on it and see there's no flexing. So it is against the PCB. Again, not sure why this is happening, but it'll be perfectly fine uh, for what we're doing. Again, in the protein typing world, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents until your boss finds out. So again, we take our butter knife here. We're going to grab some paste and we're just going to put all that happy little paste on there. Just smear all that. Happy little paste. And then we're just going to take and drag it across. Now, I want you to know that I'm not putting, even though it looks like I'm putting pressure on the PCB, I am not. I'm just simply dragging this over by its own weight. So, just dragging it over again. This PC, this paste is a little bit stringy because it's a little bit old, but again, it reflowed just fine. If this was lead free solder paste, again, I would worry about it, but it's not lead free solder paste. It's happy leaded solder paste. The greatest thing to ever be invented in the world, and I love it. And there we go. So let's just lift it up and take a look. And yes, we see all of our lands and everything are perfectly covered, even though the stencil, I don't think the cutout was quite right. All the lands are perfectly covered. So let's take our components and tuck them into this happy little solar paste. And now comes the difficult part of the process. So we're going to stick this board back into the reflow oven and hope and pray that the surface tension of these components will hold them in place while the top reflows. So let's stick this PCB back in the reflow oven and see how that process goes. So I have the PCB here tucked into the little tray and it's being supported by these two towers of PCBs. Again, as close to the edge as possible as to not leach any heat away from this PCB. If it was any bigger, I would want to support it more, but this little PCB will be fine supported just by the edges. So I do have it lifted up to the point where that uh, that little connector won't be bumping its little knock in here on the bottom here. So again, same process as before. I'm going to preheat another PCB to 30 degrees and then reflow it. So let's see if this will be a success or this will be a failure and I'll have to go to bed crying myself to sleep tonight. All right, everyone. Well, it's almost done with this reflow cycle, so I thought we'd do this live together so you can, we'll get my live either excitement or disappointment. So, uh, by the way, I want to mention that I did catch the fact that the main IC was backwards before reflow, and then I did have one uh, MOSFET backwards before I reflowed it. I always check polarity as I'm sticking it into the oven. So, quick tip there for you if you want to check the polarity of your PCB as you're sticking it in the reflow oven just to make sure everything is good. Well, there she is, she's done. So let's open the oven up, let it cool off for a second, and then we'll see if we have any components underneath this. All right, let's do this. And look at that, there are no components underneath the PCB, which is a good sign. So let's let this cool off and then we'll take it to the bench and do our final assessment of how this PCB did. Well, after uh, the board cooled down and a little bit of alcohol cleaning, I would say this board turned out perfect. I am quite happy with how all the solder joints turned out. I am very happy that everything stayed put during reflow. I am just extremely satisfied with how this board turned out and I can't wait to test it and to uh, finish up this project for the Milwaukee batteries. You are looking at a very happy little engineer. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it and being Alex Ross uh, for a video and making the Joy of Assembly parody. If you'd like to see more Joy of Assembly things, please leave it in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more shenanigans like this like I get into. Or don't, again, it's your world. You can do whatever you want.
So I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great week, and I will see everyone in the next video.